Hi guys, my name is Lily and today's video is about sauce. Stay tuned. Okay guys, so today I have a couple of sauce to review. And first of all, I want to state that there's a main difference between bow sauce like these ones here and folding sauce like these ones here. Uh, first of all, folding sauce have a thicker blade because they have to be stable and the blade has to stand alone. Bow sauce instead can have very thin blades because they have tension on the blade at the bottom and on the top. Now, why is this so important? Uh, the thinner the blade, the more efficient you can cut because uh, with a thin cut you don't have to you know, saw that much. So bow saws always are going to be slightly more efficient than folding saws with a thicker blade. What is the next general difference of bow saws and folding saws? The folding saw is limited by the length of the saw blade and bow saws are limited by the height of the bow between the bow and the saw blade. So if you cut a log this big you should be able to cut it through but when it's bigger it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Now it really depends on what you want to do if you want to build a log cabin you probably have to get an axe and a saw to get the job done. Another big difference between uh, bow saws and folding saws is that bow saws cut mainly when you're pushing them and folding saws only cut when you're pulling them. Now my personal preference is that I want to cut when I'm pushing because there I have most of the energy, most of the strength. But other people say they rather want to have saw blades uh, which cut when they get pulled. Now the bow saws might be a little bit more efficient when it comes to cutting through big logs, but when it comes to cutting through smaller twigs and small branches, uh, I tend to use folding saws like these ones here because they have finer teeth and then you can cut smaller diameter twigs more easily. Whereas with these blades here, it can be that the twig gets stuck in the blade and then you can't saw anymore. So for smaller twig work, for example, if you are an arborist or something, I would highly recommend using folding saws like these. And also I have to say, with the bow saws you have another limitation. For example, if you want to cut a branch from underneath, you can do so with the folding saw, no problem. But with the back saw, you won't be able to do it because, uh, yeah, because of the frame. The frame is limiting you from, uh, yeah, you need a lot of space for cutting. So that sometimes that's a problem when you're working in thick underbrush. Okay, so the first bow saw that I want to do a review on is this big red bow saw, which is quite long, you know. Um, it's 25 years old. Actually, it belongs to my dad and he bought it. And yeah, this is one of my favorite saws so far. It's stable. I've built my entire bug out camp with it. And it still cuts like hell, which I which is almost impossible because I've never sharpened the saw blade and I've done a lot of cutting with this saw blade here. So I don't know what steel it is, but it must be some, some really good steel from the old days, you know. Back then they have made really good uh, high quality saw blades and yeah, it's still cutting like hell. Uh, in general, it's a really awesome saw. It's one of my favorites. So if I had to do a lot of wood cutting, I would always go for this saw. The problem is that the saw here is quite big and bulky and it's not so easy to transport. For example, if you're going to do a backpacking tour into the wilderness, I wouldn't take the saw. So the saw here is more for, you know, cabins in the forest or bug out camps where you only transport the saw there once and then you just leave the saw there. But as I said, for frequent trips into the wilderness, for canoeing trips or backpacking, I wouldn't recommend taking the saw. Okay, the next saw that I want to show you is this one here. This is the Bob's 
to Strude's quick back saw. It's made from an aluminum frame and it comes with a wooden handle. Now I really like the saw because you can uh, fold it together, it's, it's collapsible and then you can transport the saw much more easily. However, it's still a little bit big even when it's collapsed and that's why I don't like to take it for backpacking. I personally have this saw in my car, it's a part of my bug out kit. Uh, the saw cuts very efficiently, but there are two things that I don't like about this saw. First of all, it makes a loud singing noise when it's cutting. And second of all, the handle is pretty uncomfortable. So if you have to cut a lot of wood with this handle, it's really going to hurt your hands. And I can highly recommend uh, using gloves when working with the saw. I want to show you is this one here. It's the Borel 21 by Agava Canyon and this is one saw that I would consider taking with me when going into the wilderness for a backpacking trip. It's pretty lightweight, it's uh, not too small, it's also not too big and also it's pretty easy to build it together and take it apart again. So you just have to do this here. And that's how fast you can collapse the saw, which is pretty awesome. So I think this is one of the best saws available on the market. And yeah, uh, it's good enough for survival shelters, for bushcrafting. You can't fell the biggest tree with it, but the question is if you really need to fell the biggest tree. So if your intention is to build a log cabin then this saw is not for you but for having it in the car or in your backpack in your bug out bag this one here is perfect it's, it's really good so this has become my favorite saw actually The next saw that I want to show you is the Barco folding saw and it has become very popular in the bushcraft and survival scene and one reason is because it's pretty small and lightweight so you can easily put it into your backpack, into your survival rucksack or bug out bag and you don't even know that it's there because it's so lightweight. Now what I like about the saw is that it has this safety button here so to unlock the blade you first have to press the button and then the blade locks in this position so you can't fold it anymore without pressing the button again. And that's a very important safety feature. Now the blade that I have on this saw is the second blade that I got so far. The first one was getting dull pretty quickly and yeah, these saws are not the most efficient ones. Um, also it's not so easy to resharpen this blade because the teeth are so small and you need a special file and most people don't bother about sharpening these saw blades and they just buy a new blade. Also what happened to me was that I was bending the tip of the saw a little bit and yeah so with folding saws like these ones here you have always a little bit of risk of bending your blade. As I said, this small saw is great for um, moderate amounts of cutting. So if you have to cut a lot of logs, I wouldn't take this saw because it's a little bit inefficient. But for smaller work, for example, for debranching logs or for cutting five medium sized trees for a survival shelter, it's definitely okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> 
The next saw that I want to show you is this one here. This is the Silky Big Boy 2000 folding saw. And yeah, this is quite a saw, I have to say. So, first of all, the saw blade is pretty thick, so it's not so easy to bend it. And it also comes with a double edge. So, the saw will cut much better than the Barco folding saw, definitely. Also, I see the same problem as with the Barco folding saw. The teeth are so fine, it's going to be very difficult to sharpen this blade. And an extra blade for this saw is quite expensive, so yeah. Now for the safety feature they have installed a security button as well. But to be able to press it I need my thumb and then my hand goes around like this. And it's not good if you you know have your hand like this because then the folding saw can hit your fingers and it would be safer if I just take my index finger and if I touch the saw like this so that the that my fingers don't roll over to the place where the saw blade is going to fold on but this way I don't have enough of strength to press down the button because yeah I, I'm not that strong so I see a little bit of a safety issue here. So you really have to watch out when you're closing the saw. Now the next thing that I have noticed is that there is a gap between the handle and the saw blade. And actually when you touch the saw like this, if you want to get it out or something, out of your backpack or out of your car, it can happen that you injure yourself in the closed state of the saw. Or maybe the saw blade rips out your rips out a hole of your tub which you have inside of your rucksack so I think it's best if you make a sleeve for the saw just to be able to protect uh, your gear and your hands. So that's a real safety issue. The next safety issue that I see is that you don't need to press the button to open the blade so you can do it so like this and I don't like it because the, the saw blade is pretty sharp and if the folding saw unfolds on you without really wanting it, for example in your backpack, you push, push it down in your backpack and then you push down something else and then maybe you grab something in your backpack and you know, you open the saw with your, with your clothes or something, so that's what I don't like about it. I think that the safety mechanism of the Barco folding saw is much better. So you really have to pay attention when you're handling these kinds of saws. Also the saw blades are very sharp looking so I don't want to cut myself with the saw here. Now let's try out and see how the saw cuts. I believe that it cuts fairly good for a folding saw. Although the plate is a little bit thicker, I believe that it will cut pretty good. So let's see if that's true. Okay, so I just have found out something very important. When cutting with the saw, you should not be tempted to push down the saw blade. Because uh, it's no need to push down the saw blade because you have a slight curve in the blade. And you can cut like this without pushing too much onto the blade. Now the first cut that I made was with a lot of pressure, I was pressing down the saw blade and then at the end I was chopping down with the saw blade like this. So don't use pressure when cutting with the saw. 
uh, otherwise the blade can you know hit your thigh or your leg and you might get a big injury from it and that's really important to consider the next thing that I have found out is that ergonomically uh, I'd rather cut with a bow saw than with this folding saw because when we look at my hand the most natural position is this okay it's not this it's not this it's this and that's the position where I feel the most comfortable with when I put strength on my wrist now when I touch the saw when I grab the saw like this and when I cut with the saw it's almost impossible to hold this angle so what I have to do is I have to bend my wrist like this and then I'm cutting in this position so when I cut in this position now I feel that I have tension on my wrist okay so I believe that I believe that when you cut a lot of wood with the saw you probably will feel it in the wrist and when I get up my thumb here then it's a little bit less pressure on the wrist but it's still not the most natural position for the hand and for example when I cut with a bow saw I don't have the problem because when I take a look at my most natural position then I take the saw and then I put the saw on the branch and when I cut I don't have to push down the saw or I don't have to bend my wrist I just leave it in the most natural position and I don't feel a lot of tension on my wrist at all not as with the other saw so ergonomically this saws here the bow saws are better suited for the human hand and also I don't have to put pressure on the branch because bow saws they come with an angle so if you press onto the saw with a forward motion it will at the same time at the same time some of the strength will push down the saw because it has an angle here and every good bow saw has this angle also you can see the same angle here at the red bow saw and the bobs to strut saw has the same angle and that angle has a reason it's because that you can cut easier into the branch and then you don't have to push down anymore with your wrist so if I had to choose between these two saws I honestly have to say that I would always go for the Boreal 21 because it's much safer to use it cuts more efficiently than the silky saw okay it has some limitations when it comes to the frame you can't cut from underneath but when it comes to bushcrafting I don't really need uh, this property when you are a professional arborist and uh, when you are on a tree a lot cutting branches and maybe in the thick underbrush and maybe if you have to cut a lot of trees uh, apple trees or something this saw is better but for general bushcrafting and, and survival I would go for this saw uh, yeah so silky big boy is a good saw but it's it's not for beginners there's I see a lot of safety issues and professional people you know they can definitely handle it but for beginners I would not recommend this saw at all you have to take a lot of care when you are cutting with the saw yeah guys so I want to thank you for watching I hope that this video helps you a little bit with your buying decision if you are looking to get a saw in the near future and yeah if you want to support my channel you can do so by becoming my patreon I have a patreon account now and you find the link in the description of this video
Thank you for watching and stay tuned till next time.